Well, Dr. Lydia, we are so excited that you're here. And I was just sharing with you that there's a lot of things I don't know, but one thing I don't know much about is oral health and how critical it is to our total body health. I think there's a lot of us that don't understand the link between the two. So share a little bit more about how the two are interrelated. Great question. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So, you know, when I was in dental school, I didn't know the answer to the question. And, and I was in dental school, but I remember they would always call us because I do hospital dentistry and they would call me, oh, there's a patient here for a liver transplant. Come clear them. And we didn't know why. Like, why are we clearing dentists, someone for a liver transplant? So because they're going to get a new liver and we don't want any sources of, of infection for that liver or that heart or that uh, hip or the knee, right? But they didn't say it like that in dental school, just come and clear and then give antibiotics. So I dug in further and I'm like, okay, we, our mouth is an integral part of our body. Everyone talks about gut health. 40% of gut health comes from the mouth. So what you eat really matters and what you consume and how you clean it. There's been research studies that show the impact of oral disease on uh, fertility on pregnancy outcomes, on Alzheimer's, on heart disease. So you better bet you that your mouth is so connected to your whole body. And it's not just when we're looking at, you know, liver transplants or kidney transplants, like we don't want to get there. And so, but we had to clear patients all the time. And I understood why later the mouth is a huge source of infection for the whole body. I know we're going to get to this topic, but I just can't wait because I remember when I got pregnant, I was Googling all kinds of videos of like what to expect symptoms and women were saying like, oh yeah, you'll get bleeding gums. And then I came across videos of women saying, oh yeah, my mom, her teeth fell out when she was pregnant. And I was like, what the hell? Like your teeth can fall out? So what, like what's happening at that stage of our lives? Great question. This is like why, one of the reasons why I'm on earth, like women's dental health and to talk about all the transitions that women go through from puberty to menopause. Okay, so let's talk about pregnancy right now. I'm in my third pregnancy. I have bleeding gums galore. It's insane. I'm getting cleanings every month. That's how I'm able to, 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 to keep it at bay. Why is that? So oral tissue is very, very similar to vaginal tissue. Very histologically, they're almost identical. They heal the same way. They're histologically the same way under a microscope. And also hormonally, they have the same receptors, progesterone, estrogen, and also relaxin around our, I'm going to talk about relaxin later. We're going to talk about bleeding gums first. So when the estrogen and the progesterone rises, you are so much more sensitive. Like I just had lunch. And if you had the exact same lunch and you're not pregnant, you're not going to be as reactive to the plaque. Someone that is pregnant will be a lot more reactive to the plaque. Why is that? You have a lot more blood flow because of the estrogen and the progesterone. Okay. They're everywhere. They're in our soft tissues, around our gums, everywhere. So hormones don't discriminate and we have them in our mouth. And a lot of people don't know that. And so when you're pregnant or you want to get pregnant, like I love to talk to women before they get pregnant, even though that's not always the case. That's why you got to get your gum health at bay because gingivitis is the local infection in your gums. Leave that like to ride out and not take care of it. It becomes periodontitis. That infection goes to your bone and you start losing bone around your teeth. And that's where you get loose teeth. There's an old myth that says, oh, a tooth per pregnancy. I have patients that have gone root canals during pregnancies because of these infections and de decay. So if your gum health is in check before you get pregnant, when you get pregnant, just keep up with it and then you won't have any of that. A lot of it is preventable. It's so, 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 so preventable. But it's, it's long story short, it's the hormones the, that are going crazy. <laughs> and I feel it. Firsthand. Another fun win for us women. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Wait till I talk about menopause if we get there today. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's insane. So me, what, what woke me up to women's dental health and how important it is for us to be very proactive. Um, during my first pregnancy, I'm missing a front tooth right here. Um, I have an implant there. That implant got severely infected 
and I had great oral health. I mean, my brother's my dentist. I'm, you know, I have great teeth. And I was walking around with no front tooth for four months, pre-mask, <laughs> before we needed anyone. And so I'm like, oh my God, if I'm going through this, I am a dentist. I have great oral health. I have a great diet most of the time. I can't imagine what other people. So then I go on Facebook. I had really bad postpartum depression my first pregnancy. And I got, I don't know, like a thousand messages on LA mommies. Like they had dental issues right after their pregnancies while they're breastfeeding and like the third trimester. So it's really real. And the crazy thing, it's so preventable. So much of the irreversible disease, disease is preventable. So I'm just mind blown right now because I'm now realizing how many women I know who had like teeth fractures or teeth falling. My sister was one and I'm like, I completely forgot. But so you mentioned a few things like how I think I was reading something that you mentioned once like 65% is preventable, which yes. is amazing. So what are some things that women can do, you know, as whether we're pregnant or thinking about pregnancy or even just for our daily health, because it's so critical, whether you want to have kids or not? 100%. Great question. Um, let's be proactive, you know, like, I know a lot of people are so scared of the dentist and my own brother is scared of the dentist. I need to sedate my brother because he had a really bad experience when he was young. So I get it. Like we really get trauma and the phobia aspect of dentistry, but you need to find a dentist that you feel really comfortable and visiting frequently. So number one, I don't believe in getting two cleanings a year. You got to get three to four cleanings minimum. I think women should be getting at minimum four cleanings a year. So I'm getting a cleaning every month and a half right now because I want to prove I I could have a lot more decay in my mouth after three pregnancies and specifically this one. It's been a very challenging pregnancy, as I was sharing earlier. So be proactive, get your teeth checked. Like if you have old fillings or old mercury fillings that are starting to crack, take care of those before pregnancy because it's a source of toxins to you and to your baby. And there's so many times it breaks my heart when I see a pregnant woman and an amalgam filling like break in half. And you don't want to be exposed to that toxins. And listen, we fix it. Everything works out fine, you know, but why that additional stress? Like right now, we don't need any additional stress when we're pregnant and even when we're not pregnant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So just be proactive, like, you know, prevention is truly worth an ounce of cure, but be very, not only proactive, but be aggressive with your hygiene. I'm not saying aggressive, like the way you brush and clean, but get your cleanings every three months. Because you know what, with dentistry, when you find things earlier, it's a lot more, it's, dentistry is a silent disease. When you start feeling pain, when you get a crack like your sister did, or you need a root canal, and pregnant, that's the worst thing, needing a root canal while you're pregnant or an extraction. That is all, most of it is preventable. Some of it isn't. Some of it, you know, just God throws things at you in the middle of your pregnancy or while you're trying to conceive. But a lot of it is really preventable. So to find a dentist that you love. Also focus on your micronutrients, like get a blood test and focus on your micronutrients. Almost all pregnant women who have decay during their pregnancy or cracks during their pregnancy, they're low on vitamin D3 and K2. Like I'm finding so many um, parallels between the micronutrients. So dentistry is not just, oh, I'm coming to fix your tooth and to clean your teeth. There is a huge nutritional and supplemental component to dental and, uh, and oral health. So um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm smirking here. Cause I'm like, I mean, can I talk about hormones so much? And it's a big pillar, obviously of our company. I'm like, how are we not educated about this? Like literally hormones impact everything in our bodies. It's everything. wild. That's why yeah. when I felt like when I met you, I mean, you're the cutest thing ever, but I love what you're doing. You're like, it's amazing what you're doing. Cause what you're doing is I always say, let's take it back to basics and let's do what our ancestors did. Like, I just, ha I love what Mona Sharma is doing because she's going, like, she's going to, what did our ancestor do? ancestors do? Also, progesterone, when it increases, specifically, I believe during the second trimester, we're more likely to get congested as pregnant women. And when we're congested, we can't breathe through our noses. So we're breathing through our mouth. And mouth breathing is another layer that we need to address and look into because that can cause more bleeding gums. It can make whatever baseline that we're at worse. And I felt it myself. So 
I wake up in the middle of the night. I do my nasal sprays. I clean my nose like midnight. That would be part of like my pee pee routine <laughs> so that I can breathe through my nose and not make my oral health worse and dry out my mouth even, even further. So there's so many layers to it. And so we just need to be talking about that. So women know it's just, we don't know. Oh my gosh. I remember the pregnancy rhinitis. I think they call it. And your nose is just so stuffy. And then I would wake up in the middle of that night with that panicked feeling because I was breathing from my mouth. And it's like almost a form of sleep apnea or something where you're like not breathing properly. It's so crazy. Mouth breathing is one of the number one causes for sleep apnea to get worse. And when you're like, I'm getting, I'm at a stage where I'm getting bigger. I don't feel good while I'm sleeping. So when you, so interesting, you use these words, you wake up in a panic because you're not getting oxygen. You're not oxygenated. And when you're not oxygenated, just think, just, just like everything's going to feel worse. You know, mentally you'll feel worse and physically you'll feel worse. So it's not just about teeth. And that's what I want to tell people. Like, when I do my exams on people, teeth are the last thing, is the last thing that I look at, your teeth. I care least about your teeth because you can teach a, like an, a monkey to drill and fill and to do things properly. Like it's not hard what we do with all due respect to dentists. I can say that because I'm a dentist, but what's hard is the critical thinking aspects of it. Like why did your sister's tooth break? Why are you waking up in a panic when you're pregnant? Why are my gums severely bleeding? Um, why did that, that she need her, that root canal? Or why did that silver mercury filling break? So that's, why is your mouth so dry to prevent it? And then there's one more hormone that, during um, pregnancy that's really real. And it gets, as you get closer to delivering, it's called relaxin. And it's a hormone. God bless this hormone. It allows us to have vaginal deliveries because it relaxes all our ligaments. So I don't know if you've like heard pregnant women, especially after they've had a couple of pregnancies, like, oh, they have like some joint pains, you know, it took them a while for the joint. I don't, did you experience, I experienced that after my second pregnancy, not the first one, but around each tooth, we have a ligament called the periodontal ligament. Again, that ligament has relaxin hormone receptors on it, that the hormones don't discriminate. So women's teeth start shifting after a few pregnancies. Oh, interesting. And we see that a lot, not usually the first, but then you have the relaxin, they're grinding, they're not taking as good care. They're not wearing their retainers or their night guards or whatever devices because baby comes first. So we also put ourselves second as moms <laughs> after the baby comes. So, um, yeah, that teeth shifting, I've had to do Invisalign when I, I, I don't do Invisalign anymore because I got so busy with the other things, but I do Invisalign on a lot of moms, especially when the lower front teeth like would shift and become crooked. And it's mostly because of the relaxing receptors. I have so many questions on up the bite and also mouth breathing, but I want to pin that for a second and go back to something you mentioned earlier around menopause. We have a lot of women who listen who are in perimenopause and menopause. And I'm curious, how does that phase of our life impact our dental and mouth health? So again, back to the two hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So in that phase of our life, they're starting to dip and go down, right? We have estrogen and progesterone receptors in our salivary glands in our mucosa, so our gum, our cheeks, around our teeth, in our mucosa, and also estrogens needed for bone, for bone health, okay? And a lot of women in menopausal transition or phase in their life, they are more prone to osteoporosis and osteopenia, bone disorders. So you have your bone. You have your mucosa and you have your salivary glands. So let's talk about and briefly what happens to your salivary glands. You start making less saliva and you start making lower quality saliva. And saliva is so integral and important for good oral health. Think of saliva as like you're bathing your teeth. You need the saliva to bathe your teeth. And, you know, I just had a piece of huge chocolate. I love that right now. And, and so I, I salivate. Okay. It's so good. <laughs> I drink my water and it feels good. I'm able to swallow properly. I'm able to taste properly. But in the menopausal stage, women have a hard time swallowing without saliva. They suffer from severe dry mouth. And then the quality of their saliva, the immunity in that saliva is not as potent. So that's number one. I can get into more details. It just gets more intricate. 
Then let's talk about mucosa. So you need estrogen to, you know, for like for skin health, like for the tightness in your skin. So same thing. When our mucosa is healthy and it's tight, we have a nice leveled amount of estrogen amongst other things, of course. It's not just the estrogen. But when that drops, your mucosa becomes more elastic. It like almost like just dies down. So it's not as plump. It gets easily affected by the bad bacteria. Couple that with the low saliva. Like a lot of women complain from vaginal dryness during menopause, right? Same thing, oral, men oral dryness is a huge complaint as well. And then you need estrogen uh, so for the osteo, so osteoblast and osteoclast are two cells in your bone that are breaking down bone and building up bone. So during menopause, that balance offsets and there's more osteoclast breaking things down. And that causes loose teeth when that happens. Um, so do you see how it's just so layered? One, it's, it's like a perfect storm that we go through. <laughs> And so I just had an 81 year old woman, bless her heart. I love talking to her. She's the wisest woman in the world that I've like one of my wisest patients. And she's like the dry mouth. I'm healthy. I'm great. The dry mouth is killing me. Like mm. the dry mouth is. And so we're monitoring her. We had to change a few of her, a few crowns that she had because what happens when you don't have saliva, your immunity has gone and decay, literally rampant decay can spread in your mouth. So we have her to making sure she's hydrating with mineralized water, um, electrolytes that she likes. She gets monthly cleanings, um, uh, ozonated oil to put on her gums or oil pulling. Uh, we don't like them to do, we don't like menopausal women to do a lot of tongue scraping because you're already dry. So you can actually hurt yourself by tongue scraping too much. Um, and she's having a hard time swallowing her food. So that's why she's always drinking. And so we work with each one of our patients to make sure that we give them solutions as well. I don't want this to be such a, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> it's hard enough. Like I'm like pregnant. I'm like, oh my God, I was, I was filming this one menopause video that will be released soon. And my brother like started crying. Like he's the most empathetic guy you'll ever meet. And I was like, you're kidding me. I thought he was like messing around with me because brothers are always. Me He's like, no, it's just insane what women go through. Insane. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> men need to learn about this too. <laughs> totally. It's a lot. It's a lot. That's so sweet that he had that moment of empathy for women. Anytime I hear men doing that, I'm like, yeah, you kind of, you get it a little He's bit. He's seen me go through hell with this pregnancy so I think like it me and him are very deeply connected we're like soulmates and it was very hard for him to see me go through that and I was like Rashad I'm like I'm very strong and you know like I, I love life and joie de vivre and, and I, I really 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 love life but I went through a phase where I really 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 <laughs> did not love life and he was shocked to see that like such a huge change to who I am and we go through that as women. And I think we go through that in every single one of our transitions, starting from puberty. You go through a shift in like, who am I? Like, what am I? How? Like, there's, and, and that's where you guys come in. That's amazing. Helping women maintain that hormonal balance elevates the quality of life, truly. Um, and now more and more women are going through IVF. We're having kids later. You know, I'm 40, I'm 40 in a couple months. So, I'm proud of my career and my travels and where I've been, but also, you know, we are having kids later and, and it takes a toll. It, it's, 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 a, it's different. So, but um, yeah, I love that we're speaking about this. Yeah, us too. And uh, like you said, so much of all of this is preventable and so much of all of this is fixable. And that's like the silver lining in all of it. Something that I have talked to about with a few people in my life is root canals that have gone wrong, specifically when it comes to heart health. I have a few people actually, coincidentally, that I've known that that feel as though um, it was a root canal that might have gone wrong that triggered something like a POTS syndrome in them or other things. Can you talk about this? What are your what is your stance on root canals? 
Yeah, uh, root canals, it's a really hot topic. That's why I love to focus on prevention and reversing small cavities and halting the progression of larger ones and talking about airway and clenching and grinding and pair because you want to prevent the root canal from the beginning, but we can't prevent all root canals. So there are two ways to think about it. There's some people that are like pull out every single tooth that has a root canal on it or needs a root canal on it. I'm not part of that team because I see the effect that pulling out teeth, multiple teeth, especially, especially on women and men, but I mostly treat women in my practice. My brother sees the men. There's a psychological impact. Like you create dental cripples when you can't chew properly and you're missing a lot of teeth. There's a huge psychological component, but infected root canals need to be removed hundred percent. Okay. Not all root canals are infected, but they're all on their way to being infected, especially when they're not done properly. So when somebody's in acute pain, when somebody has a crack, um, that, that extraction isn't the only like option for them, um, or really, really deep cavity that hit the nerve. And sometimes even those can be saved from needing a root canal. I, I do that all the time in my office, just because you hit the nerve, it just takes a lot more time and insurance based offices don't have that time, but I can talk more about that later. But when a root canal is infected, think about it as a, as a faucet, are you going to leave your faucets on at your house when you're at work right now? You're not, you want to conserve the water. You want to conserve the energy. When you have like three or four root canals that are infected, it's like you have faucets of infection draining into your body. And these infection sources are, go I always like to work with analogies because that's how I understand things <laughs> and I make it simpler. So these infections go to your brain. It's been associated with higher risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. Like there was a research study just within the past six months heart disease, they found heart attacks, like heart attack patients with bacteria that stem from the mouth, from the infected root canal to just what you're saying. Uh, the infections cause failure of transplants, impact your gut health. They make Lyme disease even worse. They make any chronic or autoimmune disease way worse. And they've been linked to certain cancers as well. Um, we always, I, I have a meridian chart that I share with every patient and I always share with them, like what organs are on the meridians of, of what teeth, because our teeth are all so connected. Like there's teeth that are connected to specific organs, but all your teeth drain in your kidneys, like your whole body drain, like your, you need your kidneys to drain because each tooth has a blood supply, a lymphatic supply and a nerve supply. So our teeth are draining. So they're drainage pathways as well. And if these drainage pathways are blocked or dead, like they are in root canals, that causes just a resistance in your whole system. And that's where it's so important to get your root canals checked and to get, to remove any infected root canals and specifically upper molar root canals for women that's been linked to breast cancer. And I've been seeing a lot of that in my clinic. With history of breast cancers, we're seeing that is one causative of the other. I will never say that it is, no, but I do feel that faucet is on and it's causing an uprising in your body. So if your body's chronically fighting an infection, how are you going to rest? How's your immune system going to be able to function properly? And it, and it impacts also fertility. It impacts pregnancy. It impacts everything. So that's why we have to pay attention to it. And the only way to check if your root canal is truly infected is with a CT scan, not the two-dimensional x-rays. So there are two types of x-rays we take in clinic. They're the two dimensionals we take on everybody. It gives us an overview of what your mouth looks like. And then when I see root canals and if there's any concern, we take a 3D x-ray so that we can look circumferentially around each root. I think that there's just so many people who haven't thought about this or they kind of feel like I had a root canal. I don't know, like, is it infected? It's just, for me, it's so helpful to get this out there because it gets people thinking, okay. okay, maybe I should look into this a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Everyone should look into it. It's so important. 
Yeah. And I love what you mentioned about the x-rays because I'm thinking, okay, who do I know who has a root canal? They might not realize it's infected. Like what do their dentists need to do? So you laid that out, which is helpful because I would hate someone to have one now and not even realize like, oh, like, is it infected? You know, yes. do you, do you always feel pain if it's infected or could it be? Oh. Total okay. No. Wow. That's why I say dentistry is a silent disease. By the time you feel pain, if you have if you have pain on a root canal, that means your reinfection is big, um, big. Even when you feel pain in your gums, that means your gum infection is more on the severe end. What, like pain is great. Like we want to be alerted by pain, but with our teeth, we're not alerted soon enough. We're alerted way later. And that's where, you know, like the tooth loss comes so suddenly, the crack comes so suddenly. Um, but yeah. Root canals are super serious. I think, I think 80, I would say 75% to 80% of, of root canals are unnecessary. I save so many teeth from needing root canals in my clinic, but it just, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort and specific materials like ozone and a special laser that we have and special bioceramic materials that we use. So, and it's not something they taught us in dental school. So it's not mainstream. Like I've had to re-educate myself in the past like seven years once I kind of woke up to everything. Yeah, that's so fascinating too. And thank God we're knowing this information now or relearning it. I just can't help but think of like my mom's generation. Like she had so many root canals and not done properly. Thank God now she sees a biological dentist. Like we have her on a good path, but like she dealt with breast cancer. She dealt with all these things. The root canals were infected. And it's like, God, I wish I knew, known, had known all of this sooner. But I mean, it's thanks to people like you that are spreading the message that this can all be preventable. And that's the big thing, prevention, right? So what are some of the biggest things that people are doing daily that are impacting their oral health? Great question. We kind of touched on this before. Mouth breathing is huge. So when you're mouth breathing, so I say nasal health is an integral part of your oral health. If you're unable to breathe through your nose, I would like to, you to take that very seriously. Go visit an airway-centric ENT and find out why. Are your adenoids too big? Do you have any septal deviations where you can't breathe? Like, take that very seriously. And this is one surgery I tell people to always do if they need to fix their nose, the septal deviation, so that they can breathe through their nose. Because your quality of life is going to go down super quickly if you can't breathe through your nose. So that's number one. Like it's you. This is this is like every if, if that's all people take from this, yes. they go figure out how to breathe through their noses and not their mouths, then they're elongating their life. They're making their oral health automatically better without even changing how they brush, floss or anything like that. OK. And why is that so important? Because when we breathe through our nose, nitric oxide is created in our nose and our sinuses and it is something that's needed for something called vasodilation and that what vas vasodilation means is that your arteries are dilating they're getting bigger so that there's more oxygen transfer across the barrier and that's been linked to people who are unable to create a lot of nitric oxide it's been linked to early onset of alzheimer's erectile dysfunction heart disease um anxiety, panic attacks, like you were saying during your pregnancy. I felt that a little bit during my second trimester where I wake up like, like if you wake up like that, you guys, you're not getting enough oxygen, like chronically, like I, it wasn't a chronic thing for me. So what are some solutions? Okay. Um, assuming that it's safe for you to it, that you're able to breathe through your nose. So I'm giving these solutions because I know that you checked with your doctor or you're able to breathe through your nose. Mouth tape has been a life savior for our patients. Um, there's a guy who does a lot of our videos and he started mouth taping seven years ago when I was talking about it. And he's like, when he's on tour, he feels better. He sleeps like better quality sleep. He functions better. He's happier. And he got rid of his anxiety. I believe it. Right? I'm living proof of it too. I'm a big mouth taper here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everything you listed, I will, it's hundred percent true. It's, it's, it has changed my life for sure. Yeah. And, 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 
And it's weird for people to shut their mouth at night. Like, I get it. It's so yeah, hard. It is weird. There's, let me, like, there, here, of course I'm going to have some mouth tape here. Like, there's many different types of mouth tape. There's one that, like, shuts your entire mouth. And there's some that, like, where it's just, it's like, it goes oh, across seen that. your lips. Like an eye. Yeah, okay. exactly. Some people got, get the 3M masking tape. I don't recommend that because I don't like the glue on that. But there's options. So try what's good for you. So that's number one. Okay. Um, hydration, like hydration is so important for everything, not just water hydration, the minerals and the electrolytes as well. Everybody, there's a chronic dehydration pro problem. So part of your oral health is your hydration. Third, there are specific, sorry, I get out of breath with my pregnancy. It's like, I'm like, I've run <laughs> I'm so excited to talk about this stuff too. Oh my God. <laughs> but there are like dental vitamins that are really important. And I haven't even talked about teeth and brushing and flossing yet. Like if you take care of that, like you're already in a better state. So mouth tape, hydration, vitamin D3, fat soluble, vitamin A. Fat soluble is very important, not just fat soluble. So that is usually we get that from animal products. I'm not going to go down the nutrition and the 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 vegan versus non-vegan, but I'm just stating facts of what I'm seeing in my clinic. Vitamin A, D3, K2, magnesium, and omega-3 fatty acids. So proper nutrition and supplementation. So anybody who has a cavity, a dental cavity, I can almost guarantee I'll put money on every single one of them that they're low in vitamin D3. Almost every single one of them. Like they did a research study, they found 100% of all the people with cavities with that. And when, since we're talking about pregnancy, if you're pregnant, you're passing that on to your baby, that D3 deficiency as well. So it just, that's how it's passed on generationally. So the vitamins, the mouth tape, the, the hydration, and then the hygiene that you do at home. So I'm a huge tongue scraper proponent. I tongue scrape before I brush and floss in the morning. These days I don't floss as much because it literally creates a whole nausea attack for me pregnant. So that's why I'm getting my cleanings every month to month and a half. But tongue scraping, so we detox while we're sleeping, right? So we detox through our skin, we detox through our tongue as well. And there's usually a layer on our tongue when we wake up. Um, especially depending on what you ate before you went to bed, but getting rid of that with a scraper, not your toothbrush. You don't scrape your tongue with a toothbrush. You actually need a tongue scraper. And so a copper tongue scraper is ideal. There are stainless steel tongue scrapers also, but copper is a higher quality material and it's bactericidal. And then, um, flossing, flossing is very important. <laughs> Very, very, very important. If you're bleeding when you're flossing, that means you have an infection in your gums. So please go see your dentist. If you're bleeding just in one place after you ate, like for example, popcorn and you're not pregnant, like we're not talking about, I'm talking about someone who's not pregnant and they're, you know, they're living their day-to-day -day life. If you're bleeding consistently, please see your dentist because something is going on. And brushing with a soft toothbrush, soft toothbrush only. You don't need to brush. Like you got to give each tooth love, you guys. Each tooth is an organ, like really. And when we're brushing for 30 seconds, there's no way we can give each one of these teeth love. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but it's true. So it's like we can't, we're always, everyone's in a hurry. Like slow down to take care of yourself, you know? And that's also stress. If we're chronically stressed and one thing I can't wait to get back to doing after pregnancies is my sauna. Like I take my binders and my sauna and it really helps me decompress and stress. And I clench a lot less when I do that. So, so it's not just, and then of course, yeah, brushing. And what do you brush with? A hydroxyapatite based toothpaste. I don't believe in fluoride. It is a toxin. I don't use it on my kids. I don't use it on me. We don't use it in the clinic. And we have a lot of patients with very healthy, strong teeth because they're paying attention to everything else I just listed. So yeah, hydroxyapatite is what you want in your toothpaste. That was going to be one of our questions, but also too, I recently took my daughter to her two-year checkup and the, uh, the doctor told me, all right, so she should start to see a dentist and you know, you should start to use fluoride on her teeth. 
And of course I know better, or I listen to experts like you and I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll do that. And then <laughs> don't. Um, but it, you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't know that they're just going to take the advice of their doctor, their pediatrician. And it scares me a little bit because she's not at that point where she can spit out, right? She's swallowing pretty much everything that I put in her mouth. So that kind of scares me. Okay. I put fluoride and she's just going to swallow it. And then what's that going to do to her? But the, what, what drives me a little crazy, like, is that hydroxyapatite is a fluoride replacement and it's a natural material. Like our teeth and our bones are made out of hydroxyapatite. It's, it's a type of material. So, and there's great options these days and they can use that. And you said something really important. She can't spit properly. Like, you know, sometimes you can't teach a, a what's the saying in English, an old bird, new tricks, like, there's some elderly patients that we have here that they do love their fluoride toothpaste. Who am I to tell them? Like, I'm here to educate them. I'm their guide. And then they're like, you know what, Lydia, I'm going to use that toothpaste. And I'm like, okay, I'm here to support you. You know, the pros and cons, I'd say very few, like maybe 10% of our patients like it. They just feel safer because fluoride does make your teeth stronger. It really does. But so does hydroxyapatite. But I don't believe in the Band-Aid approach. I believe in telling people as it is, and I prefer in educating people to make, why does cancer and disease increase as we're getting, now it's like it's increasing at a younger age. It's like scary. It's like we live in a world with a lot of toxins. There's a lot of toxins all around us. So I think like one thing this pregnancy has done for me, and I feel like all the nausea and, and the hard time I went through I feel like I've really cleaned up my house and I've cleaned up even like energies around me completely. Like I was so sensitive to energies and I was so sensitive. I still am very sensitive to it. That's why I'm saging everywhere. Like I sage every single day. I That's the only smell I can tolerate. I can't tolerate any smells. And I feel like a pregnant woman's body is like a goddess body. And it's, I'm choosing to let it guide me. Like I've never been so in my body as I have been this pregnancy. And I think that's like one of the biggest lessons for me, but there, we have a lot of toxins and fluoride is an unnecessary toxin because we have a replacement that's been researched. And like, there's some people, they're like, show me the research. Like, where has this been studied? I get it. They ha we have the research. Like I can send you all the research why fluoride is super bad and hydroxyapatite is just as good, if not even superior. But we're not also talking about diet, mouth breathing, like even your, your baby, make sure she's not mouth breathing because, you know, this is the time with children when they're chronically mouth breathing it actually alters their facial development and how they grow and their nose structure. So, um, yeah. And then sealants is another one for kids. That's also a false positive. Like, I don't believe in sealants at all. It's like teach people how to take care of their teeth and they won't need the sealants. Because I see a lot of cavities underneath sealants um, where people got them when they were younger and then they got older and there's a cavity underneath. Yeah, I'm yeah. curious. <laughs> I mean, I have a million questions, but the first one that comes to mind is flossing. Because how do you think about what's a clean floss and why is that important for us to also think about? So a lot of flosses contain microplastics and I mean, a hormonal dysregulation, you know, that adds to that. So the type of floss, there's two flosses. I use the one on a floss pick. I, so a lot of people ask me, oh, can I just use the floss pick instead of the actual string floss? And I say, as long as there is a piece of string going in and out, it, I don't care what you're using, whether it's a floss pick or not. We use a couple brands here in the Risewell, I know is a clean floss. And there's another one I completely pregnancy brain. I can send it to you off script, but it's like some one from Sweden and it's a clean floss. The cleaner flosses are a little harder to use. Yeah. I was going to say they break. I tell my husband, I'm like, can you guys create a clean, strong floss? There's an, like an area in the market that can be disrupted. Totally, <laughs> totally, totally, totally. Um, so I always say that to people because I also don't want to discourage you from flossing like yeah, the pain in the butt with the more natural ones. The and that's okay. Time. Okay. And that's, that's okay. If it breaks, just use another one. Like it's okay. <laughs> Cause it's, this is something you guys you're doing almost, or you should be doing it every day. Right. That was going to be my question. How many times a day 
should we be flossing? Listen, it depends where you're at on the spectrum. You know, I'm a very realistic uh, practitioner. I'm not going to tell you to stop smoking if you're smoking. Like it's it's just not going to work. Like people need to want to learn to stop smoking. Um, so I just educate. So if you floss every single day, and if you're flossing like three to four times a day, you're over flossing, like twice a day, morning and night. But if I had to choose, nighttime is more important than morning. Okay. In the morning, let's do the minimalistic routine. You got a tongue scrape to get rid of that gunk. If you don't get a, get rid of that gunk, you're more likely to get bad breath. You're more likely to get tonsil stones, especially if you're mouth breathing. But, so tongue scrape, guys. That's I don't really. tongue scrape. I, I, <laughs> my husband has been telling me for years. I'm yes. like, that's one thing. I do all the wellness stuff, but tongue scraping. Got it. But, I will, but how do you clean it? Because I get like grossed out afterwards. How do, oh, if you get grossed out about what you see on your scraper, imagine it's staying in your body. I know. <laughs> so I just have the warm water running and after each this and that's enough. And then, you know, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, you know, and it's metal. So it's easy to clean. Okay. Like so and water. the copper one you said. Copper has a natural antibactericidal effect. I personally don't like the copper because right now I'm uber sensitive and I taste it. So I use the stainless steel one. But as long as you have something external. And then there's plastic ones, but we don't want to use the plastic ones. So only stainless steel or copper. Yeah. But please. And then let me know how it feels. <laughs> I will do it today. Sorry, I interrupted you. You were talking about something. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not mouth scraping, but. So how, so she asked me about like, how often should you be flossing? So at minimum every night, right? If you are not a flosser and you have active gum disease, right? I don't want you to, for me, I want to get you on my side as like my patient or my friend or my loved one. Like, I'm not going to say floss every single day. Like if you floss twice a week, I'll be happy. Cause you know what? You're going to start feeling changes when you're flossing and then you're going to want to floss more. And that's where the relationship with your dentist comes in. That's really important. And your hygienist, the more often you come, the more you floss, the less issues you have. It's like a inverse effect. The more you come, the less issues you have, the less you come, the more issues you have, or like the more you take care of yourself, the less issues you have and vice versa. So yeah, with flossing, I do it almost every night now better, but I went for during my pregnancy for four months without flossing. And you guys, I felt a difference, man. I felt a difference in the way my breath smelled. I felt the difference the way my gums reacted to cleanings and how I was bleeding. And I was like, I don't know how people don't floss like in their life, like at all. So I guess it made me even more empathetic <laughs> towards people. But when you start flossing, you you feel a difference. You feel a difference. And And remember, if that infection doesn't come out here, it's gonna go in there and it goes to, you know, your heart. And if you have a heart condition, or if you have had a heart transplant, or if you've had, so let's look at gum disease and like fertility or, or pregnancy. It takes you six months longer to conceive if you have active gum disease. And if you just floss that, that will immediately help. For men, it decreases sperm motility and sperm count if they have severe periodontal disease. Like it's been studied and it's connected. So flossing is so important. Yeah. And how do you know if you have gum disease? Is it like if it's bleeding a lot, you mentioned that shows infection. Is that like the first sign? That's of gum the first disease? sign. That's the first sign. So like I sa said, there's gingivitis and periodontitis. And this is really important for people to understand. Gingivitis is fully reversible. Okay. Gingivitis, it's localized to your gums. Your gums are bleeding or they hurt. Like they hurt when you press on them. Okay. When you leave that, at bay and you don't do anything about it, that infection, the localized infection goes to your bone. That becomes irreversible. And then the bone, like literally the acid from the bacteria melts away your bone and you start getting loose teeth and early tooth loss, et cetera. So gingivitis is reversible, you guys. It's, 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 that's wonderful. So with a few more cleanings a year, you can keep that in check and it's totally worth it, worth the investment. Yeah. I have to ask this question and it might be totally off base, but I have to ask it. Um, I saw a video where this woman was saying, if you have active gum disease and you're flossing, that could be creating harm maybe because the bacteria 
something along those lines. Is there any truth to that? So is she eating? Is the woman eating? Mm, I I'm mean, sure she's eating like in her yeah. life. Like, I, yeah. I, I was being facetious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I've seen. I've seen. I think that some someone sent it to me. If if, if you're not flossing, you're keeping the infection in. Right. You know, and eating, like if you eat a tortilla chip or eating something crunchy that hits your gums, that can make you, so it's a doing the same, it's doing the same thing, you know? So I don't, agree, I'd want to see that in full, but I don't agree with that. No, I want you to be, I'd prefer you to be bleed. So I always say to my patients, you're going to bleed for a good seven to 10 days if you floss every single day after like a deep cleaning, for example. Okay. And then after the 10 days, you're going to stop bleeding. And they do. They almost always do unless there's something secondary going on. And if you're bleeding in one or two areas, not a big deal. It, you, it can resolve and, you know, I, but I would be very proactive, especially as we're getting older, you know, it's our bodies do shift and, <laughs> And so I'm I'm gonna need a graft on two teeth because from all the grinding I did while I was so nauseous, I experienced like debilitating nausea that sometimes clenching that was the only way I could keep things in like it's it was gnarly. So had I not been getting the cleanings proactively, I would need grafts on a lot more teeth. So it's like we're not seeking perfection here. There's no such thing, but it's just let's try to make our quality of life better. And if if you're not properly flossing, that infection goes to your to your to your body in various areas. And when it comes to cavities, can they be reversed? What's your advice for people who are experiencing active cavities or they just keep getting cavities all the time? Okay. So if cavities, that's like my passion, they can absolutely be reversed. Not big ones. Uh-huh. Small ones. It's funny, I just got a message on Instagram from a mom. So I created a course on reversing cavities. And I got like my first, so we launched our first time in, I think, June. So I'm starting to get my first set of testimonials because it's been like six months. And this one mom, she's like, I took the course and my daughter had three cavities. I asked them, let's watch it. And now she doesn't need any drilling. She's an eight-year-old kid. So we just prevented trauma for this kid, unnecessary drilling, and you can reverse cavities. Now, of course, if you have a large cavity that's beyond the first layer of your tooth, your enamel, no, that cannot be fully healed and reversed. I haven't seen that. Some people claim that they've seen that, but me personally, I have not seen that in my practice or, but you can halt the progression. You can strengthen the good tooth around the cavity so that when I come to remove your cavity, you give me a better base. Um, so we want to make our teeth just cleaner and more resilient to the acidic fluctuations that we have every single day as we're eating our foods, right? That's what we want. So um, you can definitely reverse cavities. I do it all the time in the clinic. And there's something awesome called ozone, ozone therapy. And for little cavities as well, and even big ones, we ozonate them. And we've been able to halt the progression of so many cavities, so many superficial cavities where I don't even need to drill. And then the bigger ones, you know, when people start making changes in their diet and the way they breathe and the supplements and all that, they're not only taking care of their mouth, they're taking care of their whole body. It's an investment in that. And then they start feeling better. And then they become even more vested in themselves and they want to take them to the care of themselves even better. It's like an avalanche effect, right? So they I can absolutely be reversed. Oh my gosh. Well, I had one last question. I feel like we could be talking to you with just all day. But I thought it was so interesting. I love your social, by the way, and we'll share all your details in our show notes, like such valuable uh, information. And you mentioned that if your bite is off, it can impact so many things. And I had no clue. So yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Like why is having the right bite? And what does that even mean? Like the right bite for your overall health? Such a great question. And and it's it's a loaded question because there's so many things that can impact your bite. So number first thing, like as a youngster, like my daughters, I'm expanding their arch with my functional dentist friend because I want their bite. I want them to grow into their optimal bite and not need braces. But if you need, I mean, I got braces, right? So if your bite isn't right as a youngster, you can't chew properly. You have speech impediments. 
And most importantly, if you have a lot of crowding, that means you probably have an airway issue. So your bite tells me a lot about your overall health, okay? And that's because teeth come in straight when your airway is patent and you're breathing properly. And when you're not, your teeth come in very crooked. So if you have any loved one, a niece, a nephew, a cousin, check their bite, like check their teeth that they have spacing between their teeth, their baby teeth. If they don't have spacing between all their baby teeth, that means they're collapsed, like my younger daughter is, okay, because she used her pacifier for too long. It's like, I know all this, I, but then I'm also a mom. Like, I'm a dentist, but I'm also a mom. So there's got to be grace given to moms. <laughs> but I am expanding her arch, and sh she's had major behavioral improvements and bedwetting improvements. So your bite impacts that. And that I can talk to you about like for another like hour. But as an adult, just biting makes you grind more. It makes you clench more if you have an uneven bite. If you don't have symmetry in your jaw, you get musculature changes. You got TMD, which is temporomandibular disorders. We all have TMJs, which are temporomandibular joints. But you get TMD when your bite is off. And also our fascias in our mouth is connected to the fascia for our entire body. When our bite is off, it can impact, like I've seen people that their hips got impacted by tongue tie releases and bite adjustment. Really? Yes. I have a tongue tie. I got to get it fixed. I got to get it fixed too. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> but do my functional therapy first before you fix it. Oh, okay. I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very important. My functional therapy is like lifting weights for your facial muscles. You got to get your facial muscles. Uh, but your bite is so, so, so important. A lot of headaches are prevented by having a more even bite. And that's why I always talk about the hormone relaxant in pregnancy, like my bite has shifted and it's gonna need recalibration after I have my baby. I, I may probably do Invisalign again because I feel a shift in my entire arch, it's insane. And I think it's because of that from the clenching and from the hormones. But also we do fillings and crowns and onlays and all that. So dentists cause shift in bites as well. So it's really important that we get the bite correctly. Lots of talk about bites. Like <laughs> that can be like a, a whole episode on bites because you really want to set up kids to for success from when they're younger. And there are certain, yeah. And mouth breathing can cause um, your bite to be like a lot can impact your bite. So amazing. I, I wish we had more time because now I'm like, oh, I want to talk about Invisalign. I want to talk about yeah, I know, we'll, I know. We'll, we'll have to do, we'll do a yeah. part two, hopefully. Yeah. 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 Have the um, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, um, totally. It was so awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's so informative. And congratulations to you again. We're so Thank excited you. for you. And this is great. We'll put all of your information in the show notes. Is your clinic taking patients? If anybody's interested. Thank you. It was wonderful to chat with you guys and me hear me like nerd out on everything that I love. But um, yeah, our, our office is taking new patients. Uh, we are booked for a few months out, but there's like cancellations all the time. Like people reschedule from flying out of town, et cetera. And my brother practices the exact same way. And we just finally hired another associate to replace me during my maternity leave. She's wonderful, wonderful. It's like she was, she's God sent. So I fully trust her to work on my teeth so I can have her work on my patient's teeth. But yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you, Lydia. We'll see you soon for sure. This was so much fun. Thank you.